All right, so um, just a, somebody asked me about Vernoy stuff. I know there's a lot out on the internet, but I thought I'd just do a quick video to sort of consolidate what's out there for two very simple examples. Um, the first one is um, an inflate, we're going to inflate a Vernoy pattern, and I will point out that it's um, considered a highly overused pattern, um, but I had a question about um, having about doing it, so I'm going to go ahead and show it. Um, again, there's a lot of stuff on the internet already um, about this, but um, let's go ahead and basically for a planar surface, um, you can come in and just make a Vernoy here. Um, with the regular Vernoy, and then um, it actually will come out as a mesh, and so you can unify the normals, and then you can try mesh it, right? So it'll put a mesh on it, and let's go ahead and erase all this, um, or hide that, and then once that gets going, um, you can come in and grab the edges. So if we look at the edges here. Um, it looks at all the edges, both the exterior and the interior. So, for example, um, let me preview this guy. And what you can do is pull the points, let me preview that, and as anchors from the naked edges, which are the exterior edges of the individual pieces, and then um, from the in interior edges, you can um, lengthen the line so it grabs all these edges and allows them to stretch. Um, and then you can put pressure on it. Um, so if we go ahead and turn all this guy off, right? And let's turn this guy on, right? You can see if we reset it, and turn the solver on, it'll poof up, right? So, and you can adjust the strength of it and all that kind of stuff here, right? Get it really big and blow up, or take it back down to zero. Let's go ahead and reset it. Whoops, it's still too big. I think I had it somewhere down in here. Can't remember. There we go, somewhere in there. But um, so that's that one. Let me go ahead and turn that guy off so it's not running. And let's get rid of the preview. Now, if you want to do something on like a curved surface, right? So let's say you have an arc or something that's not straight, um, you'll need to use the populate geometry instead of the populate 2D because it's a three-dimensional, um, and you will have to use the Vernoy 3D, which actually makes B reps. So um, what you do is is you turn on this population, and it and you take a bounding box. So instead of the rectangle that kind of bounds this one, you need a three-dimensional bounding box. So that's just the box, right? And then it's been scaled a little bit to avoid intersecting with like the edges of the box. The top and bottom don't really matter for our purposes, so I just did it in the X and Y. And if it intersects, it'll give you additional lines, like you'll get a vertical line through your Vernoy or something like that. So you may have to scale it, you may not, depending on what your geometry looks like. But basically what happens is you take the, um, the box and the bounding box and the Vernoy that it makes and you intersect it with the extrusion. So that's what actually, if we look at the preview here, that's what actually gives you the curves that you can use to split the surface. So now we can take these guys, the B rep, B rep, and get the curves and split that original surface, turn it into a mesh, unify the normals, and then you're just sort of off to the races the way we were up here. So if I turn all this guy off, once you get to here, 
You can triangulate the interior parts. Let me go ahead and preview the solver. All right, so we can see it. It's a little dense, but um, and you have the same thing. You have pressure here, so if I turn it on, you'll see it starts to blow up. And right now um, it's going negative, so instead of reversing the normals, you can just either go positive or negative in the pressure. So if I come up to positive pressure, it'll start going the other way. Oops, not quite there. Let's go ahead and we'll take the max up to 0.2. And so if I take this up, it'll reverse itself, right? So you can start to see it pushing the other way, depending on whether it's positive or negative. So now it's pushing in. Um, and again, the line length, it gets all these little interior triangulated lines and lets them lengthen in order to accommodate the pressure. And then the show just shows it. Um, and then I'm come in and let's turn this off. It's still running. Um, and you can get your mesh from here. And you can bake it if you want to. Or, you know, th whatever you want to do. One millions of things you can. Right. And then let's get rid of all that. I think I've got a few. Do I have anything else on? I don't know. Turn it all off. There we go. And then you'll have your little poofy mesh. Okay, so that's it. I'll uh, post the image of this up, um, of the definition up.